Okay, how's everyone doing today? A lot of familiar faces. Okay, I guess we'll get started. Uh, this is me, Professor Miguel. We have Professor Brown here, and then Professor Vidar, who's probably the most famous person on this campus, so no need an introduction. So what is MQP, folks? Why are we doing this? Because school requires us to. Right. Yeah. It's almost kind of like a visa for you to walk on the ramp on your graduation day, right? Right. Okay. We'll get started. Uh, so the agenda today for we're just gonna have like some general comments on how to find M an MQP, uh, and then presentation of a few various uh, MQPs offered directly by EC faculties, and then followed by a very informal and a casual uh, Q and A session. So hopefully we can answer as many questions uh, you may have. Also, there should be a sign up sheet. Please write your name on it so we can have a. Uh, we can have a count, and also, I'm gonna pass on these sheets. I'm gonna ask you to write your name, email, and uh, fill this form as much to the best of your ability. Okay, all right, folks. Uh, we're gonna start. Uh, I have compiled a very small presentation, uh, the information that you may need for your MQP project. Uh, Professor Vidar is gonna jump in, also and fill in where needed. Uh, you don't have to wait to the very last to ask question. As we go, you can just raise your hand and ask questions that you may have. So many EC students and EC advisors will secure MQPs in B term. So historically, we have had a lot of projects taken up in the B term. For some reason, we got little, uh, you know, we had to push it, push it forward. There's a lot of things happening in the department. We have ABAT coming up. so. A lot of things going on, so we have moved it to the C term. Selection is competitive for most projects. Many of the best projects, students, advisor, commit now. Don't be left behind. So is there anyone who has already approached to their potential advisors? Only four of you. So what's going on in your mind right now? What's the plan? How are you going to do this? Yes, Rosanna. Figure it out today. Yes. Okay. All right. So uh, remember, you know, uh, there are some projects which are offered to faculty who are already doing research, and they have already might already been taken up. Okay. There's some projects which are offered through ISGD. Uh, anybody know what's that? So that's inter interdisciplinary global. Uh, studies, right? We don't have to worry about that part today because those uh, have already been taken up in uh, in the last fall. Correct. What we are going to talk about are uh, the, about the projects which are offered through uh, the faculty, mainly and the industry. Uh, now, um, coming back to what MQP is, again, it's a signature WPI degree requirement. It's basically equivalent to three courses and a lot of you will get started uh, in the A term and then follow it uh, B term and then finish in C term but some of you may take uh, in starting in the B term and then C and the D you have to finish in D term there has been rare cases where people will take MQPs in summer also uh, but we encourage you to start as early as you can in the A term EC 2799 prior to starting MQP. Uh, Professor Vidar, you want to jump in a little bit about 2799? Sure. Uh, how many of you already had 2799? Just about most of you. So you know from 2799, we break you up into teams, you have a project. I often encourage <coughs> students in 2799, if you have a good project as a 2799 project, sometimes you can continue that project as an MQP project. All you have to do is find an advisor. If you like the team, that you had in 2799, if you're still friendly with those people, if your group is still stuck together at the end, it's, it takes a lot of effort to form a good project team. So if you've already put in that effort, why not continue with that team? So very often, if you have a good team, have a good project idea, you can approach faculty and see if they'll advise you on those projects. Um, that's one opportunity. Also. <clears throat> a lot of professors look to see that you've had 2799 because if you have, it means you've had that experience, whether it was a good one or a bad one, but you understand about group dynamics, you can hit the ground running when you, when you uh, 
uh, start your MPP. So it gives you some good experience. Um, as Professor McSue mentioned, some faculty have their own project ideas. You go to them and they'll be recruiting students for their projects. In other cases, you might have a student-initiated project and you're just looking for an advisor. Um, I'd strongly recommend those of you that want to do your own projects to try to form a team with your friends and approach your professors um, with a project proposal, maybe a three to five page proposal as to what you might want to do and see if you can get a professor to agree to advise your project. I think the most important thing I want to leave you with today is the onus, the, the responsibility of finding an MQP is kind of your <laughs> responsibility, right? Because if I tried to find an MQP or Professor McSue for each of you, that's a lot of work for us. I'd rather um, give that responsibility to you. That way we're kind of cloning ourselves <laughs> and it's much more efficient. So I think the biggest challenge today is um, if you're by yourself is to find other students that have similar interests and then you can go to professors that have those interest areas and propose an MQP or get on board with one of the MQPs they're all doing. Yeah, so I'll therefore uh, that is one of the reasons I want you to, before you leave this room tonight, I want you to fill this form right here. So a lot of you will have projects hopefully you know, in a couple of weeks time or start approaching different faculty members or start discussing brainstorming your ideas with different uh, advisors, uh, there will be uh, some of you who will still be looking for someone. And if you fill this form, it will be easier for me and for the uh, rest of my colleagues to actually put you in a team. So say you have a team, but you're looking for a power guy. Uh, having this information with me, can ha I can hook you up with anyone who is looking to be a part of an MQP project. Okay, so before you leave, please fill this for us. So they are industry sponsored project. Uh, those usually come in at around this time of the year, right? So we already have some projects. I can remember there's one from, there are few from Dell. Uh, I am currently working on an industry sponsored project which is funded by Eversource. It's a utility company. Okay, every now and then we, come, we will have these projects. Uh, the way it works is some of my colleagues will take these projects and then we will look for uh, students for that okay now uh, right now those projects may not be up there on eprojects.wpi.edu uh, but hopefully once we decide who's gonna do what they should be up there so that's that's one uh, project uh, yes Rosanna yeah. when it's sponsored by a company uh, do international students have a is it like will they not be chosen to be part of the ones that are sponsored by companies? That depends on whether or not a citizenship is required by that company. So um, we'd have to look into it further on a case-by-case -case basis and ask, ask the company that question if they're willing to do that. So there's, there's a contract that's already developed between WPI and various uh, industry partners WPI has. They have one uh, with Eversource, and similarly they have one with, uh, with Dell also. If they put this requirement that the candidate needs to be citizen, then we have to abide those things, okay? Um, second is related to faculty research interests. Uh, and one of the best ways actually to look for those kind of projects, we've been encouraging all other faculty members to actually put their projects uh, on eprojects.edu. Have you guys explored this this part of the web uh, website? Okay, so I'm already logged in. I don't know how your interface looks like, but if I go to project opportunities here, and then say I'm gonna choose MQP, and then it's a little weird the way this whole thing works. Is <laughs> so I'm gonna click here and then after that it opens up more filter and options. So say I'm going to choose on campus and then I'm going to choose 2020-21 and then say I'm interested in the project which are offered by electrical and computer engineering. Okay, now there are six, eight projects right now but hopefully there will be more of these projects and this is the one actually which I put it a um, couple of months ago. So this is about the high altitude balloon for measuring environmental pollution. Here what you see is the description of this project. Basically what we are trying to do is send this balloon high up in this space, in this space, the stratosphere, and then measure the uh, 
hazardous gases like greenhouse gas emissions at different levels and then get retrieve our flight okay uh, this is these are just uh, co2 sensors nitrogen oxide sensors temperature humidity sensors but in the in the long run what we want to do is actually get the real time data uh, as we uh, you know throughout the whole flight time of this project so skills and qualifications required for something like this if you want to be a part of it you want to be good at arduino that's one microcontroller that we have used but we are open to other hardware also like the raspberry pi uh, electronics hardware prototyping skills and wireless communication the communication part of this project is very uh, significant and important so it's open to electrical and computer engineers although i would take some cs1 cs person too also if needed um, this it's going to be starting in a b and c and then team size what i'm looking for is between three and four okay all right so most of these uh projects will appear on e-projects like this i can show you one more example professor ulkohan uh, flexible wearable sensor she has been working with these are the skills and qualifications required what she's been trying to do is making some sensor that she can put on in faints and measure their vital, vital signs and other measurements while they can be at homes and they can wirelessly or uh, upload some data to some sort uh, where it can be available for the doctors to see uh, so again uh, some information regarding uh, Again, it's going to be offered in A, B, and C terms. She did not mention the size of the team, but something that if you have any question, if you already know what, you, what your team is going to be, that is fantastic. Uh, because the most toughest part is going to be to finding the team members, right? And finding the right team members. It has to be a good mix. Uh, you should know what your skills are, what your strengths and weaknesses are. So make sure you, know, you find a good mix of students uh, in your team. Yes, Professor Bedard. Just to comment on these particular yeah. projects offered by Uka Hanguler, I believe she's going to be conducting an interview process. So if you're interested in that, she will interview you and ask for some of your information. Um, she's anticipating there'll be a large turnout, so she's going to be very selective on that one. Great. I believe. Um, so, yes. Um, how will the process work if you're a double major? If you are a double major, you're gonna have to have an advisor from um, both so who's, departments. Who's the That's Leo. Okay. So what's your other major? Mechanical. Mechanical. So you could you could choose an ECE project and try to find an ME. So if so, here are your choices. You could do two separate MQPs. You don't want to do that. <laughs> <laughs> or you try to choose one MQP that has overlap in the other by at least one third unit of work. I think that's basically the rule. So whether ME is the dominant or EC is the dominant, that will be depending on the advisor and the project that you choose. Um, very often I notice, for example, right now I'm co-advising on a, an ME MQP that has to do with sports and sports injuries and mm -hmm. designing a shoulder brace. Um, and the three students on that happen to be football players. Um, and they mm -hmm. have sports injuries so they, they can relate to the project. And um, one of the students is a double major and they're working on the sensors that are going into the, the shoulder pad that they're monitoring. Right. So I would say if you find, so you need to find uh, a project that maybe an ME project that requires some EC on the project, and then find an ECE advisor to co-advise for the ECE portion of that project. Does that make sense? He's gonna need two advisors, right? Yes, I made the major yeah. advisor and, uh, my, and the second advisor. Uh, both of them from, uh, uh, you know, one from electrical and one from mechanical, correct? Yeah, so, yes. so in, in, as an example, in my case, the student's name is Jordan, he plays football, he's an ECE major, mm -hmm. and I think an ME minor, or something. I don't know what he's right. doing, but he's doing a, I think he's double major. So yeah. he did his ECE major, um, he, he's working with Professor um, Fiona Levy in ME, she's the, the, the major advisor. And then he needed to find an ECE advisor, so he approached me, and I said, "Sure, I'll, I'll co-advise for that for his ECE." Okay. Okay. Any any questions? That doesn't mean so you far? come to me, though. <laughs> 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 okay. Any questions so far? Okay. Uh, moving on to the next part, which is the student-generated pro uh, projects. Um, 
I did a couple of projects which uh, students approached me to discuss their idea. Uh, I liked it and went ahead and uh, advised the project. Okay, so again, you know, if you have an idea, um, before you reach out to the faculty, I suggest you work on your team. Okay, I really, it would be so easy for us if we already have a team and you approach us and discuss your idea. Even if I'm full, I would take it because, you know, I know that you already have the bonding between each other and you, that's like half battle already won, right? So, one thing that uh, I really want to discuss here is we have spent a lot of time just tailoring and tinkering around with our ECE web page. And one thing that we have updated uh, in the last few months, I'm actually going to go to this link and I'll show you. Okay. Um, maybe I can go back here. So if you go to an EC uh, page and then you go to major qualifying project and then you look for advisors right here. Okay. So you, this page will tell you about the faculty advisor interest. And this is a great resource for you if you are look if you already know what your project or what you want to work on, and then you are looking for advisor and which advisor will be a perfect match, depending upon what you want to do. Okay, so this is a great resource there. So say you want to work on uh, drones. So I'll just search for drones and say I have worked on drones and Professor Brown is also doing one MQP on drones. So there are a couple of us. Similarly, if you want to do something with machine learning, so we have Professor. Uh, Gene, uh, again Professor Brown here, uh, Professor Zeming, uh, he's also doing stuff related to that. Or if you want to do on renewable energy, so all you need to do is search and we got Professor Sundari. Uh, and so a lot of stuff. Uh, we have updated this page and uh, it will be nice like if you come up with some project, you might want to uh, come up with three potential uh, advisors and then you know rank them you know what would be your first preference and second and third and then just approach them just email them hey you know I have this project uh, I like to meet with you and discuss and explore possibly uh, options of like advising you advising us this project um, make sure you know um, your your project does not necessarily need to be finalized at this point when they when they approach us right we can tailor make it or you know add more features or change the direction a little but uh, having a team and knowing what you know what you want to do is going to be really helpful so this is a great uh, uh, resource for you in order for you to find the right person for your project um, and uh, there are some people which are uh, where do I go did I close that page oh no yeah uh, there are some advisor which are like very very hard just like Professor Bidar he will be taken up you know very very soon so you might want to approach these as quickly as possible Professor Clancy does a lot of great projects also Professor Viglensky a lot of uh, he does on the communication part so you may want to approach them as quickly as possible all right um, projects offered by other WPI departments um, so many other departments, especially robotics, often need at least one ECE student on the project. And they will add, they, like if you looked under the RBE projects there, mm -hmm. Professor, under E projects, you might see a, a large number of <coughs> RBE projects that need at least one ECE student on them. So that's another resource for you. Um, so you can search robotics, you can search the mechanical engineering, as well as ECE. So I'd say those three areas often they need at least one ECE student on, on those projects. Okay, at this point it looks like this project maybe it cuts across biomedical and medical, uh, mechanical and robotics. But you can actually have multiple checks on this. I chose robotics uh, and then this is the only one that comes up. And that's, it's, that's surprising. I would yeah. expect a lot more there. That's maybe they're in the process of putting up on the e-projects. Huh? You know what, try going to last year's projects because they might not be posted okay, yet. Yeah. So and I this is another thing too. So we're a little behind. A lot of professors may not even <coughs> post on here because they're waiting to see what students they might already get. Get yeah. And then they don't want to advertise and get too many. Correct. So if we look at last year, you can get a very good picture of what's going to happen possibly in the coming year and see where professors, what projects that were available last year. And I'm certain that most of these professors will have continuations of these projects. Okay. So here are those projects. 
that required both robotics and electrical ECE tree climbing robot <coughs> red legs so students can propose projects on key projects as well what do these students propose S starting summer starting uh, this summer okay. yeah yeah so yeah so this is this is something that uh, we have been talking about and um, hopefully uh, starting this summer you guys can go log in your using your credentials log in and then put projects on eprojects.edu um, till now it's been all faculty who have been doing that but starting summer you guys will also have the option to do that um, okay <clears throat> ECE majors require an ECE advisor regular full-time ECE faculty member other WPI professor with collaborative appointment uh, so say some professor is also associated with chemical engineering department and ECE he can still be your advisor okay uh, double majors <clears throat> this is something what uh, Leo asked uh, it's okay to have one advisor if that advisor has appointments in both departments uh, else require two advisors so one from each department um, if you must recruit a co-advisor prepare a one-page project description completed EC program tracking sheet uh, written description of co-advisor role commitment so there's some documentation involved if you have to uh, advisors well it's nice I mean if you're if you're approaching let's say if, if a student were approaching me and asking me to be an, an easy advisor on a project in, in mechanical mm -hmm. it's nice to know exactly what's involved <coughs> so okay. um, if you could get that information from the major advisor and bring it to one of the EC advisors that would be helpful that's mm -hmm. what that's for okay must secure co advisor prior to MQP registration Okay, <clears throat> applying for an ECE MQP, EC faculty sponsored. Okay, so there's no uh, formal uh, application process for you to apply for some MQP. Like we previously mentioned, the best way would be to approach the faculty as quickly as possible. Uh, go with your team, discuss idea that you may have, or even if you don't have an idea, just reach out to us. Uh, you know, some uh, some may already have something. You know you know in the pipeline and they might be looking for some students so this would could be a great resource for you just reaching out uh, to faculty so there's no <coughs> general application though some faculty have formal applications so some of the fundings uh, comes through some industry so they require you to, to go through some kind of uh, protocols so professor Ulkohan will do have some like a uh, formal application process but that's not going to be the case with every faculty um, contact interested faculty member directly several listed from this is the same page that will take you to the advisors interest page you can apply for more than one MQP meaning you can approach multiple professors at the same time um, but you only accept one okay all right um, any any questions so far uh, you don't have to wait like I mentioned until the very last you can any question that may come uh, just raise your hand <clears throat> So, first of all, why you wanted me to have this slide? I forgot. <laughs> <laughs> Did I ask you for this slide? Okay, this, this, this just I didn't tells. Even know about this. <laughs> <laughs> okay, this basically uh, tells what uh, you know. What was the uh, number of MQP count uh, for the year 2018, 2019? Just give you an idea, Professor. But I was telling you, he was such a. Everybody wants him to be. And I'm keeping advice. Embarrassing. So, <laughs> so is this this rough and rough idea like you know uh, how other faculties are doing? <clears throat> I don't know how meaningful it is to you, but um, uh, this just tells you like you know who has been doing what in the past. So this means I'm not taking any MQPs in the coming year, right? <laughs> <laughs> if Rick say so. <laughs> <laughs> well, I would say what it means is that most faculty advise one or two MQPs. <coughs> so if you want, if you really want to work with a particular faculty member, you probably want to approach them pretty early. Um, and Professor Batar is a bit, of, and Professor Mughal is also. Bo they're both exceptions. They've done more than they're supposed to do. Um, <coughs> so that's not a, a trend that we want to continue. So and, and not only that, but I'm in the position of an instructor, so I do not have uh, graduate level research. So my predominant responsibility is undergraduate. So that's why yeah. I do take on more of these projects. So. I have more time than other faculty to do this kind of advising. Not this year. Not this year. <laughs> <laughs>
So uh, let me ask you, Professor Bedar. So, what do you what are you looking for from uh, from students? And I want them to think of it from a, you know our perspective when they approach for MQP. What do you exactly want them? You're like, yes, I got this. So, and I'll I'll take this. MQP. Most faculty members are very busy doing the research that they need to do. And oftentimes, if a student comes to me and <coughs> says, do you have an MQP for me? I'm like, no, I don't. But if they say, hey, Professor Batar, I get this idea. What do you think? I'm like, oh, that sounds pretty cool. Do you have any partners? Like, yeah, I get a couple friends that we could. I'm like, OK, put together a three to five page proposal describing what you want to do. And if they get that to me before the end <coughs> of the week, nine times out of 10, I, I take them as a Project Y, because they showed initiative, yeah. they hit the ground running, they've already done some legwork, you know, and so it's not a lot of work. So I love getting a project group that is going to be minimal work for me, Correct. and a great project with some motivated students. So that's what I'm No, that's for. true, that's true. And I'm kind of the same way also, you know. I don't want to babysit, I don't want to, you know, teach you step by step or things, you know. I really want you to, you know, uh, just monitor and guide you and help you with any resources that I can provide you in order for you to succeed in your project. Okay, it's going to be your baby. You're going to be working on it for three terms, so you need to take the initiative. Okay, um, and actually think beyond an average student. Think of it like in a way like I want to get publication out of it. You know, I want to make a strong resume out of this. How can I do that? Can I get a, a conference publication out of it? Can I get a journal, referee journal publication out of it. Can I get, can I make my graduate application more stronger with this? Can I uh, find a way to do something uh, if, at a graduate level in, in someone's uh, lab for research? Uh, think of that. Um, we have a lot of students in the past, they have filed patents and stuff like that, right? So take it as a, and it's a great opportunity. One of the thing I liked ab uh, about WPI is this MQP. Uh, I think it's a great opportunity. Um, <clears throat> so, all right, uh, I have put in a couple of additional slides. So, suggest so depth in one or more EC areas to contribute on MQP. Um, if you look at our curriculum, it actually takes you to five or six different areas where you can build expertise or build your career upon it. Uh, and those include power systems engineering. We are in the process of revamping some of these courses. Uh, <clears throat> analog microelectronics, circuits and microwave signals, biomedical engineering, computer engineering, and security. So there are a few new courses coming in in this uh, in this area right here at the bottom. Uh, so this will be interesting. So it usually takes one full term for an off-campus project um, for MQP. So I mean, there are projects. Um, that I, well, I, I guess for this year, these have already been, this is mostly through the IGSD. IGSD, yeah. So we have some MQPs that occur off campus and that, that occur in one term, but those would have already been applied for and um, they probably already made selections for those. I, I think that's already been, did you guys have, the IGSD must have already, the global programs must have already done the recruiting yes. for this. Do you know in anyone -term. who's a part of uh, MQP through IGSD? You don't know anyone? Okay. That um, should have already So those so Silicon not. Valley and MITRE, yeah. who do they get hired through? Through IGSD? Mm -hmm. Yes. <clears throat> Else it usually takes three terms for an on-campus uh, project. Uh, <clears throat> check. It's also about that time you make sure you know you have all done all the prereqs and uh, all your degree requirements are done. Uh, so at least this is for your information. I, you can read it later. I'm not going to go through the whole thing. Uh, check with your advisor on the overall degree requirements. And uh, lastly, get ready for the walk across the stage on a graduation day. Right? Okay. Uh, so any question? Any question? Yes, Rosanna. How should we approach a professor? Like, should we email them or should we just go up to their office? I would send an email, uh, get an appointment, 30 minute appointment and talk to them. Yeah. Uh, but make sure you do your homework when you when you get there. Right? Uh, yeah. I can offer a suggestion here. Yeah. Go to the library webpage, maybe you could do that quickly. W.edu and the library. And 
then go to student projects, which is um, just search it. It's right in the yellow okay. in, in the, under that right there, and do MQP projects, which is down on the bottom. Now hit electrical and computer. So the library has a searchable collection of all the MQPs that we've done over the past 10 years or however <coughs> we started putting there. So if you, so you've got 2019 there, right? These are yes. all the projects that were done in the electrical engineering department. And I'm sure the professors that advise these projects might be doing similar projects. So mm -hmm. you could look at these projects and see if any of them are of interest to you. Find out who the professor was and approach them. Say, hey, Professor Bittar, I noticed that last term you did an MQP with assistive technology involving um, children that had muscular dystrophy. I'm really interested in that. Um, okay, come by my office, we'll talk. Yeah. And then I'll say, all right, here's an idea. Now, can you come up with two other friends of yours that'd be interested in doing the same project and we'll come up with something. And then that's the way I approach it. So everything's out there, you can tell who did what last year and they might still be doing something similar this year. So that, that's a wealth of information. There's got to be 40 MQPs listed there uh, like, of various types. Like a lot of them. And all the different mm. projects that professors were involved with in the past year. So that's, that's one place I would start just to get an idea of what professors have been doing. Um, we do, so I've noticed Professor Mugal that it is 5.30 and I don't mm -hmm. know if this room is probably scheduled for a six o'clock class. So should, we should probably get yeah. the pizzas going. Yeah. And we also have Professor Brown. Yeah. Were you planning on saying anything about any projects that you no, might be I'm just curious. I mean, how many of you chose WPI based off of this opportunity to do a major qualifying project? Right, a lot of you. I, I think it's um, in terms of you know when you go to interview for jobs, uh, which will be something you'll be doing in your senior year. The MVP <coughs> is something you'll probably be talking about a lot on your interviews. So make sure that you pick something that you're going to be proud of, that, that you can talk about and uh, <laughs> talk about how you contributed and how you showed initiative and how um, you know you formed a team that had a complementary skills. And yeah. All of these things are really important to employers. They know that you can do KVL and KCL and, and Carnot Maps and all that yeah. stuff, right? That's the given, right? But showing initiative, showing the ability to work well in teams, yeah. seeing a project through to its finish, those are skills that a lot of companies are going to be really excited about. So. Yeah. Use your MQP to build your resume, build your uh, you know your CV for grad school if that's what you want to do. Uh, but I think this is you know really important. And anybody that you know who isn't here that needs an MQP, tell them to start thinking about getting an MQP because yeah, it's uh, we don't like people to show up at, at the start of a time and say where's my MQP, right? So you you guys are important. Make sure that everybody in your class so, gets so an MQP. Rule here's a rule: do not let C term come to an end without securing your MQP, okay? And don't let that happen. Don't leave any of your classmates <laughs> behind. Bring them along too. Like if they miss this meeting, let you them know. You want to go into your that. summer with no anxiety. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to say one last thing, and, and uh, it's not related to the uh, getting securing an MQP for, uh, for yourself. It's about, right about this time of the year, a lot of you will start applying for jobs and start receiving offers. So in about two and a half years of experience at WPI, what I, feel, what I felt is A term and B term students will go like this, and then I, once they get the job offer, their progress <laughs> level will go down. Please don't do that. That's a very, very bad attitude to have in your life, okay? You need to keep on it, you know, uh, going on the same uh, you know, pace. Uh, please don't do that, okay? Uh, anything else? Oh my, so much. Here. Has yeah. everybody signed up? Anybody? I will say this. Did you notice yeah. on the e-project site there weren't that many projects posted? Mm -hmm. I think most professors, at least in our department, have been successful recruiting MQPs, students from MQPs, without using that. And sometimes if we do post things out there, we get too many. So yeah. professors tend to hold their cards close to their chest. Right, not right. reveal their hand, I guess. Because... You know, they, they have good students in their mm -hmm. class, and they'll be selective, and they'll begin to form their teams kind of under the radar. Um, at, but that's not, you know, we're trying to encourage everyone to make this more of a formal process, correct, to get everything out there. But in <coughs> the end, it always comes down to that dynamic, it seems to me, mm. from year to year to year, where professors are not posting all the projects that are available. There's a lot there that you don't see. That's why I'm suggesting look at the library, because there's no hiding 
there. <laughs> all the projects are posted. Well, I shouldn't say all. Some have uh, intellectual property that's sensitive, and some is also security sensitive, yeah. like MITRE. So those projects are not at the library. The ones that, uh, like <coughs> Professor Clancy did two with that MITRE, they're not they're there. They're not there, yeah. They're, they're, it's top secret. Yeah. So not everything's there either. Okay. Would you encourage them to be uh, there on the project presentation day also? Absolutely. Yeah. So what Professor McGill is referring to is project presentation day occurs in April. In April, I think. Well, towards the end of the year, right? Yeah. And students will be presenting their MQPs. Yeah, go to that. Absolutely. Yeah. See what's going on there. Hopefully, you already have your MQPs chosen by then. By then, yeah. That's too late. <laughs> but good for sophomores to go to. Yeah. See what's going on. Mm.